be able to present our next speaker, Lily Eskelson Garcia, President of the National Education Association and a lunch lady from Utah. Wow. Welcome to the movement. Give me your tired, you poor, your huddled masses, and we can have an Oklahoma faculty meeting. You know, this didn't happen overnight, did it? They've been digging this hole for a long, long time. This was not 15 minutes ago. How many of you have pulled out of your own pocket money to help the students you love? How many? And you and I know it's because you just didn't know what to do with all the extra money in your big fat paycheck. So here we are. We give blood, we give sweat, we give tears, we give our early morning, we give our late night, we give our cold, hard cash to the students we love. And we've done it for so long that the people in here just don't understand what their job was supposed to be. What they, they don't understand that for us, this is more than our job, this is our calling. NEA did an exhaustive study that I want to announce to you. We have looked at every single member that works in a public school, and you will be surprised to hear how few of them are billionaires. Yes, I too was shocked. But here we are pulling out of our own pockets what our students need. The folks back here don't understand what we do. They don't understand why we would continue to do that. But they think that they can keep digging the hole and digging the hole and digging the hole and we will keep backfilling it with our time and our money and we'll do it forever. They are mistaken. And we are through correcting their mistake. Enough is enough. You know that no one sacrifices more for their students when there's a crisis than the educators that know their names. You know that if a tornado hits, if a hurricane hits, fire, flood, we are there for our students. This is not an act of God. This is man-made, this crisis, and it is shameful. We've been sounding the alarm. We've been doing what good citizens are supposed to do. We talk to our legislators, we write, we call, we invite them to come into our schools and see what the results of their underfunding has meant to real school children. Classes exploding with too many kids, a lack of books and technology, and educators that have to, have to put up with two or three extra jobs just to make ends meet. And they've patted us on the head and said, keep up the good work. Now it's time for them to keep up their work. They need to go to work and they need to give us what we need to do our jobs. And there's a lot of us that showed up here today, but we're not all educators. There are parents and grandparents, business community members, the faith community is here. We have people who advocate for families and children. We are not alone in this. We are all coming together. And I have been going to different places around the country representing educators. I was in West Virginia not too long ago. And I've been 
talking to people everywhere I go. And there is a disturbing common message. More and more people, whether they are teachers, support staff, even some of the administrators, are saying, I don't know if I can afford to do the world's most important work. I've had our young colleagues saying, I had no idea I wouldn't make enough money to pay off my student loan. We've had people who have said, when I get home from my second or third job, my own kids are already asleep and I don't even get to kiss them goodnight. So we are saying that we understand, like no one else, what sacrifice is. I talked to a third grade teacher in West Virginia, and she said, you know, I probably should have left for my own family's financial security. I should have left years ago. But I love these kids so much, and I thought, I don't think there's going to be someone left to take my place. So I'm showing up, and I'm going to fight for them. I am not leaving. I am going to fight for the students I love. It is a sacrifice for you to be here. You don't want to be here. This is not a day at the beach. You shouldn't have to be here asking the people in here to do their jobs. And I know there's a whole lot of people that don't want you to be here. They would rather you be quiet and just put up with it a little bit longer and a little bit longer and a little bit longer. They want you to know your place. And we do know our place. It is a place of honor. It is a place of courage. It is a place of power to open a child's mind. You are part of a movement that cannot be stopped. And we will not be moved from this movement, we shall not, we shall not be moved, we shall not, we shall not be moved, just like a tree planted by the water, we shall not be moved. We're fighting for children. We're fighting for our children, and we shall not be moved. We're fighting for our children, and we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, we shall not be moved. We're fighting for our future. We're fighting for our future and we shall not be moved. We're fighting for our future and we shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, we shall not be moved. We shall not. We shall not, we shall not be moved, we shall not.